Thanks. Thanks. Welcome, Mr. Cox. Thank you so much. Thank you, Principal King. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, okay, great, great. Okay, um, looks good. I just don't see my little box there. So can you see me? Yes, we can see you uh, over in the corner, corner, Principal. Oh, but I can't see myself. <laughs> yeah, now we, we can see you over in the corner, uh, and, oh, and we, can see your, okay. <laughs> we can see your slideshow on the screen. So, oh. and we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. All right. Well, I'll try to do my best. Well, welcome. Thank you so much uh, for all of us who are joining. Uh, today. It looks like we have about 30 families and staff on. So I want to thank you for taking the time out this evening. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, this, these online things uh, do help. And, you know, this would have been a, a, a meeting that we had would have had to cancel should we have been in school. So I hope you uh, are joining us from the comfort of your home. And you can sit back and relax and hear what we have to say. Please note that everything that will be uh, shared tonight is on our Lacey site and also this information has been pushed out to each of our classroom teachers and again we are always open to hear suggestions commentary or questions um, once this is done and even if you have questions beyond so if mr muhammad is uh in the background thanks so much um you don't need to mute your phones or anything but if you do have a question um you can go chat and put it in the q a in the chat box and at the end of the presentation we'll get to your question thanks so much so again, my name is Leslie King, principal, and this is the Theodore Smiley Lacey Town Hall, um, and we welcome you again. So I just wanted to take a moment to thank you, um, the Lacey teachers, uh, staff, and the parents. Um, we always talk about us being kinder strong, um, that we have been trying our best to support your students uh, each and every day and constantly evolving in our learning and our teaching. And so I wanna thank you guys, specifically the teachers that are on this evening for all of their hard work. I don't know how they do it, but they're doing it with grace and love and it's very much appreciated. And I know the parents feel the same way. Thank you, parents, for being at home and partnering with us um, as we go through this very, you know, interesting school year. Um, and, you know, I saw this quote that school is not closed for the year, the building is. And, you know, there's definitely a, a, a a uh, hum of hardworking teachers, administrators, and support staff that is working behind the scenes to hopefully make everything seem pretty effortless for your for our family. So I want to take a moment before we get started just to thank everyone, as well as district administration and support personnel who have been guiding us um, from the beginning. Thanks. So the purpose of this meeting is to kind of frame out what is expected um, when we return back to phased in hybrid model. So beginning January 11th, uh, TNEC Public Schools will begin our hybrid model using the phased in approach. And the phased in approach will start with the Theodore Smiley Lacey School. On January 11th, we are open our doors um, and we will begin this process. There is a phase two that includes students for grades one through 12. So if you have um, other children, you have a delay in starting, but Lacey School as well as Bryant will start in person January 11th. 11. So mark your calendars for that date and we will use this pre presentation to just share with you what that's going to look like, um, you know, how do we prepare for it and what it's going to look like when we're in person. So kindergarten students will have the option to attend in person. Um, using the hybrid model, which is two specifically assigned days following the current schedule. Um, this week, our kindergarten teachers at Lacey School have um, implemented a slightly uh, shifting schedule. And so that includes half days and small group instruction in the afternoon. Um, so that will continue even when we're in person. And we'll talk a little bit about how that will look. Um, you should have received a registration form asking you to complete it by 12 18. If you do not complete that, that means that you are coming back to school. So the completion, and I'll go over this a few times throughout the presentation, the form is if you are opting to stay remote. 
Okay, that's the default this year. Um, this in this particular survey is if you are filling out the form, you are saying that you want to remain remote. Once you remain remote, you can't just flip back into um, come back into school. However, if you um, complete the form and you come back into school, you can also opt for remote should there be an issue and you you're as a family choose not to send your child to school. Special education and self-contained kindergarten students, that's the LLD and the BD class at um, Lacey School, will have the option of returning for four days per week. So their schedule will be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday for in-person instruction, again, following the current schedule. So in order to populate, uh, to, to keep our school population safe and to uh, make sure we don't have a lot of children in the classroom and ensure that we're following social distancing um, guidelines and CDC and district guidelines, the district is going to place students in groups or cohorts. Um, the cohorts will enable each classroom to have enough space for the students that were coming in that cohort. So for example, the students will be identified by their last names. So um, if you are in cohort A, you will be composed of students whose last names begins with A through L. If you are in cohort B, M through Z. And these cohorts are based on your family ID and Skyward. So if you have children at other buildings, um, your children would be going to school on this, with the same cohort. So if you have a student at Lowell and middle school and Lacey, your family would be cohort A, and that means you would go to school on Monday and Tuesday. So this is a, you can go back one. This is a little visual, if you can go back one, Muhammad, um, or maybe you went, go ahead, next one. Okay, so, so that phase one <laughs> will begin January 11th. You can keep going, yep. Okay, so cohort A, as I mentioned, will attend on Monday, Tuesday. Cohort B will attend on Thursday and Friday, and Wednesdays will be all virtual. Um, and that's so that intensive cleaning can happen in the school, and teachers will work from home on those days, and all students will be virtual. Students will also alternate in person and remote based on their designated days. And again, I am keep reiterating the current instructional schedule will remain with their current teachers. Whether you're in person or remote, you will have the same teacher. We want to continue to build community with our students and we want them to continue to work collaboratively with their peers. So you will stay with the same teacher. In-person days will be continue to be half days, 845 to 1215 as students will be dismissed at 1215 and depending on their small group schedule may be required to log back on at one o'clock for virtual small groups. So there's still some small um, schedules that we need to work out to give students an opportunity to get back home and you know eat their lunch and stuff but the half day maintains that we don't have to be worried about lunch and crowding and eating in a cafeteria or in a classroom. The lunches will be grab and go and students will go back home and they will log in for their virtual small groups if their schedule um, is, uh, is for a small group for the afternoon. So this is just a visual um, for our families and for our staff, uh, just to kind of clarify again, Monday, Tuesday, A through L, Wednesday is all virtual, Thursday, Friday, but it is five days of instruction. Um, it's just two days of in person and a one um, and then three days virtual. So this week we've been going using uh, for the first time we've used it's fine Mohammed this 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 week we the first time we've been using a Monday through Friday schedule as opposed to a through a letter day schedule so that would ensure that you have a consistent schedule for your child um, when we return. So a lot of parents uh, emailed me and asked me, what is it going to look like? How will the teachers teach both? And again, it's something that we're all going to try to figure out. I have the uh, pleasure of having two students who are remote as well in my home. And it's very interesting to see how different schools and school districts are managing it. Um, but we'll share what has been discussed and um, solidified here in Lacey School. Go ahead. 
So the hybrid model of what it's going to look like is going to combine, combine in-person and virtual. Um, the school, the, the weekly schedule again will be two, two days and the teacher will be teaching the students in the class. And while the second group, stupid, group of students in the same class will be learning the same from home remotely. Teachers um, instruction may consist of teachers moving in and out of breakout rooms, um, listening to conversations of students who are in school versus students who are at home and vice versa, providing feedback to students, comments about the work that they're sharing, and giving opportunities for students, even if they're home, to work with their peers um, on their Google Meets and collaborate on assignments. For SEL, which is really important for our age group, um, we're going to continue along with um, class meetings, um, creating community through class discussions, looking at historical um, moments in time and holidays and things like that, social emotional check-ins and mindfulness. That will be consistent whether you're home or you're in school. Um, remote and in-person learners will be able to collaborate and work with their peers in real time through the Google Suite, which our, our children have gotten very savvy with, such as Google Docs, Slides, and Meets. So they'll be able to work um, in real time with their peers. And then teachers also may create small groups of learners to collaborate, collaborate and work individually, which they've been testing out these last few weeks, working in small groups um, in the afternoon, and that could also happen during the morning. So um, because of all of the lessons will continue to be on Google Classroom, there's not going to be any huge shift from what has what you families have been using to keep abreast of your student assignments, to submit work, and to get information about what's happening in the classroom. That's all going to continue. But in order to prepare for your students, um, students will have to bring in their devices every day. Um, we're going to encourage and um, remind families to charge their devices and their headphones or whatever else they need. We will stay using our Chromebooks. Uh, the district has certain um, settings on the Chromebooks to ensure that students are um, being appropriate. So cellular phones and outside computers will not be permitted as a learning tool or device when in the classroom. And again, face masks and facial coverings. And we'll talk a little bit about what the classrooms will look like um, when we return. So in November, when we were really excited to come back, our teachers came in uh, four days um, during the month of November and December to construct a vision for in-person learning and also to kind of create the classrooms a way that followed the guidelines that were given to us by the district and CDC recommendations. So the Lacey school teachers arranged their classrooms in socially distanced and safe configurations. So we'll share these um, pictures with you so you can get a sense of what the classroom looks like. So this is an example of a U-shaped table that a teacher might use with a small group. In this particular configuration, you can see that there's um, seats for two teachers, uh, two students and a teacher, and then there's also a, a small um, ottoman for a space holder. But these sneeze guards that are on there, so each child has a sneeze guard in addition to the mask that they're wearing. So it's almost like double protection. So if the teacher needed to work in a small group or even wanted students to collaborate with each other, they have their mask, they are six feet apart, and you also have the two sneeze guards. Similar with some of our uh, square tables, and again, all of our furniture is 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 all um, the same in all of the classrooms they're identical furniture so we were able to ensure that each classroom was set up with the same social distancing and mark the floors and everything like that so as custodians cleans they will continue to put the furniture back in a place that is appropriate and socially distanced again this is an example of a rectangular table two sneeze guards for each student um, so double protection and then also a face mask. And these uh, tables are mobile and can be moved as needed. Again, not only do the desks have the sneeze guards, but they're also distanced apart. So students would be able to still see the teacher, the screen, or be on their computer, but still be far enough um, from their peers um, to adhere to the guidelines. And if you can see there's small, there's some tapes on the floor as well. Um, the district will 
provide safety supplies for our teachers and our students. Of course, we encourage our families to provide um, whatever supplies that they uh, work well for their students, masks that fit, um, masks that are comfortable, masks that um, you know may meet the needs if a student has an allergy or things like that. But we will start off with a basic kit for each student. Each student will have a clear bin next to their classroom that's not in the pictures because we hadn't received that yet but each student will have a clear bin in the classroom where they would put their personal items to avoid having to get up go to cubbies back and forth and make sure that students uh, personal items are not touching um, so each student will have a very large bin where they'll keep their materials for the day and no one else will use that bin so they can keep their additional supplies change of clothes um, you know things like that in their bin Also outside of the school, we kind of mapped out um, safety protocols for coming in the building. So um, as we get closer to return to, to school, as we've done in the past, we will send um, out information about busing and entering the building and what entrance and how we would do it and what time. So all that stuff is forthcoming, um, but we have multiple um, entrances for students to ensure they're not crossing um, paths. So if you have your classroom upstairs, you'll come in one entrance and and you'll go right to your classroom. Um, if your classroom is on one side of the school, you'll enter through another door. And um, if there are parents that need to line up or are going to be uh, waiting probably before the doors open, we have social distancing markers on the ground to ensure students and families stay six feet, of, six feet apart. And then also we have the same on the walker and bus distancing areas as well. So next steps for families. So if you want your child to remain remote, then you must complete the remote only option registration form by December 18th and indicate your decision for your child to continue with remote learning. If you want your child to attend via the hybrid model that we talked about, you do not need to do anything. You do not need to fill out a form. Your default is come back to school, right? So you don't need to do anything if you want to send your child back to school. You would only fill out that form um, for the remote only option. Um, here are a couple of questions that parents um, have asked and teachers have generated for me. So um, I'm just gonna take some time to answer those questions. And then if anyone else has any questions, you can put those in the Q&A chat box. And uh, we have a few district support personnel and administrators on um, if we have any questions about uh, safety protocols and the like. But just note that your kid's current schedule will not change. So the schedule that your teachers have been working and kind of finalizing uh, this week will be the schedule that will remain in January. So we're going to continue with the same schedule, same specials with obviously, um, you know, if there's emergencies or absences, we may have to shift. But the daily schedule would be the full half full day of instruction. However, your kid would only your child will only be in school from eight to 12. 15 go home and then if they have an appointment with the teacher for reading or for math or remediation then they would log back on or to do a special um, synchronously um, so that's January 11th families who select the hybrid model and then want to switch to all remote must email at least three days in advance um, to have your child and then you'll send they'll send you an email confirming the switch so if you select to come in and then you decide not to they've asked that you um, email us and let let us know because you're really actually taking a spot for maybe a student who would like to be in in school Okay. Also, families who select remote learning must remain for the remainder of the third marking period. So if you choose to keep your, home, your child home on January 11th and so on, you cannot come back until the marking period ends. Um, however, if you choose to come into school and that is the option that you, go, um, that you uh, make with your family um, and you then decide to go remote, that is something that can happen at any time. So you can go remote at any time, but you can go in person once you've made that decision. I hope that's clear. Yep. 
And of course, things can change. So we're excited on coming back to school. Miss uh, Kelly Cambridge, who has been supporting the PTO um, since Brian, um, is helping us transition to the new Lacey School PTA. So we're gonna save the date and we'd like to have our parents join us for a presentation Tuesday, January 12th at 7 p.m. We'll send an agenda out. Um, I wanna thank everyone for their support. I'm wearing my Lacey gear. That was our first fundraiser that we were able to do. And then secondly, the Scholastic one, but we hope to do more um, to continue to build community with our students, particularly when we return. So parents who are interested in joining or just have questions, um, you know, the PTA um, meeting will be a great time to share those ideas, questions, and inquiries. Um, we also encourage you to visit us on our social media platforms. You know, that's the Lacey School number. We're, we've been working behind the scenes. That humming is definitely myself, Miss Shannon, Miss uh, Nunez, Miss Brown, and Miss Cambridge, Miss Hamul coming in and helping, and everyone preparing their room. So there's definitely humming behind the school. So if you need uh, behind the scenes, so if you need anything, please call the school. I've asked Mr. Muhammad if he could just uh, link onto that Lacey Google site because it has most of the information that we feel is uh, pertinent. Just go into re-entry facts, FAQs on the top. So this has been updated as we go. It answers all the questions that we've been getting from parents. It goes through the schedule. It gives you links. It shares everything that I said today. Um, it also can be um, translated, I found out, Mr. Muhammad, and I'm working on that. Um, and I've also let the ESL teacher know um, in case there's families out here that would like this translated in Spanish. But it has all the social distancing protocols, I did not want to take a tremendous time going over those today. I'm very conscious and respectful of everyone's time, but all that information is there where you can process it as well as, well as uh, pictures that you can take um, questions about ventilation, cleaning protocols, and the like. So I definitely encourage you, especially if you're, uh, your whole family is not on this call, grandma's not on this call, and she's a primary caretaker or dad is working, you know, take a look at these this information it talks about um, symptoms, uh, you know, how we return back to school, um, device, what happens if your device breaks, you know, things like that. So I really would like, and we'll keep adding as we get inquiries from families, we'll keep adding to it. So it's a really live and working document that will change with the times. Thanks. We also have our Facebook page and our Lacey uh, School um, IG that we're working on, um, making more robust. So we want to thank, thank you um, for all your help. Okay, so that's it for me. Um, I want to thank everyone and happy holidays, of course. And at this time, if there's any questions, I will check and see. I got some highs, I got some, <laughs> but uh, no questions. Does anyone have any questions? That means we did a great job. Yeah. Miss <laughs> King, there is a uh, some questions in the Q and A. Okay. I'm not sure okay. if they've already been open. Answered. Okay. What time will school finish, start, and finish? So that is also on the website. So the the schedule that your child currently has will continue. So we are in a nine eight nine o'clock start time, eight forty five entrance, twelve fifteen. Um, dismissal and so on. So that schedule will, and we'll send that out, of course, closer to the time. But your the current schedule that your children has in terms of entering the building will be the same. What if the numbers are not even in a particular, like more kids in cohort? Okay. So the numbers in our classroom, good question, Sherry. The numbers in our class in our classrooms um, do dictate if there are half and half, that's still less than 10 kids. Um, but according to the district, we will still have an A and B model. Um, there's no plans to have K go four days because most families are going to be remote as far as I know. This is uh, district-wide. Will students have the temperature check before entering school? Uh, Mr. Cox, uh, do you wanna to speak to the temperature check um, yeah. protocols? Yes, good evening. Um, so um, as the Qualtrics uh, email will be sent out to parents daily by 5 a.m. and need to be completed um, by 7, 7 a.m., excuse me, um, 
it will be the responsibility of parents to take their child's temperature so that they can accurately and honestly answer the health uh, tracking questionnaire. Um, subsequently though, although uh, the CDC has given us guidance that says a temperature is not a, a direct correlation to COVID, it is an underlying indicator. And as such, um, all students and staff will be subjected to random temperature scans just to ensure that we're keeping a baseline knowledge of what the population in each building, uh, for like, no pun intended, so we can take the temperature of the building. Okay, great. Um, stay on, Mr. Cox. This is another question. I did give um, a very broad answer on our site. So for Linda Peterson, the question is, what is the protocol if someone tests positive in a classroom? All right, our, our, our district protocols directly align with the guidance from uh, the CDC that um, through their guidance, the uh, NJ Department of Health um, has given guidance for the reopening of schools in their K-12 document and also updated it in their uh, guidance document to K-12 schools on December 2nd. Um, so we will, we need people to focus on, on the science and the, um, uh, the exact nature of the virus and not sometimes the pandemonium. So if we have, um, and, and we know everyone's worried and we want to maintain the safety of everyone, but if we have a confirmed case in a, in a individual classroom, and in an individual classroom only, that cohort of classrooms, so let's say it's that A cohort that's on a Monday, Tuesday schedule uh, in person, everyone virtual on Wednesday, uh, then they switch to their virtual for Thursday and Friday portion of their cohort. Let's say we find out that uh, a student comes in on Monday. Student, you know, it's, it's the procedure of the family to get COVID test on Monday, right? Or even better, let's say they take advantage of the district COVID testing on Wednesdays. And so that student comes on Monday, goes to school on Tuesday, randomly, you know, asymptomatic gets tested with their entire family on Wednesday. By Saturday, they, they're informed that the child tested positive. Um, there are two scenarios, and I'll try to cover them both in a, in, in a short amount of time. And so um, if that student wants notified, they would immediately call Principal King. Uh, because it is the parent's responsibility to immediately notify uh, their child's principal of a po positive test. Um, at that time, Principal King and I would discuss where that cohort was at. If we know for a fact that that cohort never left their room on Monday and Tuesday, and the only concern is for the people, the children in that classroom, as well as the instructor or instructor support staff, then what we would do is that student would be the confirmed case, and all his or her classmates and that instructor or instructors or support staff that encountered that cohort in that room would be direct or primary contacts. All those individuals would need to be quarantined for 14 days. Um, because as CDC guidelines currently state, anyone who is in immediate proximity for 15 minutes or more in a 24 hour time span is considered a primary or direct contact. The, the other side to that is when we have what's called or defined as a community event. And so there will be some times, uh, you, you know, if we set up some, you know, once the phase two of the building is complete, if we're allowed to get into the gym, let's say it's like March or April and phase two is complete. And, you know, this classroom on the second floor and this classroom on the first floor, on opposite sides of the gym, you know, they're getting some free time to stretch their legs, you know, get some energy out as, as all children need to do. And then those classes seemingly have no other correlation. They go back to their classrooms. Same scenario. We find out on Saturday that a child from one of the classes is now tested positive. What would happen is that secondary classroom, because they have a, a linking or a community event, that classroom would also need to be quarantined. But we would not immediately close the entire building or quarantine the entire building without a linking or community event that ties the cohorts together just merely being in the building does not warrant a uh, full-scale quarantine. Um, and I know the follow-up question for parents is, will, my, will I be notified? If you are the parent of a direct contact, primary contact and or secondary contact, myself, my office, Principal King, we'll, we'll formulate that list. We'll do our contact tracing with the guidance of the uh, local Teaneck Health Department. We will have that list of parents. We will call you directly, say, hey, we can't tell you who the student is or staff member is, and we can't even tell you if it's a student or staff, but your child was in immediate contact or in secondary contact of a confirmed COVID positive case. 
you are now here by, by quarantine for this amount of time at home. Please monitor your health symptoms. And by all means, knowing your status, you know, not to be cliche, knowing your status is always paramount. You can, after this time, it is warranted if you wanted to go get a test to know your status. We do not encourage, and the CDC does not encourage, immediately going out to get tested a day after you're notified because the median incubation period is five days. The maximum incubation period can be from two to 14 days. So if you get notified on a Saturday, don't go get tested on a, on a Sunday. It, it, you're, you're, we understand you want to know, you want to put yourself at, at ease, but it's, it's almost like wasting time. Um, I think I've answered the quarantine question. Yeah, and, and then I also, there is a question, the protocol if the student exhibits any symptoms. So just at the building level, we have some proactive approaches to ensure that if there are students that come in, they're sniffling, they're coughing or something like that, we have an isolation room dedicated to students and staff who exhibit any symptoms during the day and the nurse will maintain a record and a log of that student and any contact. But we'd like to be proactive and try to make sure that if a student or a staff member is exhibiting symptoms that before they go into a class or before they go into a community space that we've done our due diligence to make sure that we've monitored them for um, symptomatic things like that. And then the all the infected areas, if the person comes into school will be cleansed and sanitized, um, you know, just for you know safety protocols. And then at that point, then I would notify um, the nurse and um, Mr. Cox, and then we would then probably ask a parent to please come get their child um, and subsequently test to make sure. So we do have some things to be a little bit more proactive. Um, we didn't get into that. It is on the website about having kids sanitize their hands before they come into the school. Um, our classrooms are all equipped equipped with bathrooms with no touch faucets and lighting and so we and we know that um, the teachers will be making that part of their kind of daily routines to wash your hands before and after going to different places and things like that and then also wearing the mask and doing as much as we can do in a ventilated areas outdoors if feasible and things like that so we really really want to take a proactive approach especially with our kids who are so small um, to make it part of our daily schedule can um, i add one thing to that principle yep mm -hmm. um and for anyone who tuned into our most recent board meeting on wednesday um it, it was something that i ended my presentation to the board and to the public off with by stating we know we're in an unprecedented time um we know we want to all get our children back in front of the live in-person instruction with their teachers because it is proven that children can flourish in that environment. But we also know our health of everyone is paramount, right? And so something that you think may seemingly be the sniffles that your child gets, let's just err, err on the side of caution. And that is direct guidance. If you feel like you or your child is sick, or like there's been a little bit of a sniffle going around your house, it is far more prudent to just say, we'll, we'll self-quarantine for two days. And because if it's a little sniffle and it passes, no harm, no foul, that day your child can log on, um, you know, virtually to still, to still continue, continue, excuse me, synchronous learning virtually, because sometimes, you know, you have to take care of yourself first. And then if it passes, hey, we just took a little precaution. We thought it was a sniffle, wanted to make sure it was fine. We came back. And then secondly, we just need everyone to answer that health form honestly, um, because it, it's, you know, there are people that test positive and have been asymptomatic the whole time, but you can still potentially spread it to someone who has an underlying health condition that may not be able to fight it off the way you or your child did. So let's, let's just have a little bit of communal, communal love and respect for each other and, and just try to protect each other. If, we, if you know you have some kind of symptoms, just err on the side of caution. Yeah, de definitely. And I think just um, historically, those families who were with it at Bryant um, know Miss Aguero will call a parent um, at any time and say, come get your baby, you know, and we, we it's not a personal thing. It, it really is about protecting our students. And even the back then, that was just for things like a common cold or a low grade fever. So we've always um, been very proactive at um, prior at Bryant. Um, many of our families know uh, Miss 
Aguero, who will be our nurse here at Lacey School. So um, we want to trust the nurse and the professionals to make those decisions. And again, ask you to really do your due diligence and make sure that you answer those questions, um, as uh, Mr. Cox said, honestly. And again, if you are home, your child can just uh, be present virtually. So the child will not miss any instruction um, and it will probably save other people a lot of heartache if should, should something arise from that. Um, okay, how will specials work? Um, and then there's a question about symptoms due to weather, like asthma. Okay, so I don't know if Miss Aguero is on that call. Um, I think that's Miss Boney. Um, if a child has a chronic respiratory sim symptoms, due to weather that mimic a cold or asthma-like symptoms, but do not have a fever. So what is the question? The question is, do you send your kid to school? Probably not. <laughs> I wouldn't send my child to school unless you know that the child is clear and that the fever or symptoms are, link are specifically linked to, um, to, uh, to, the, uh, to any asthma or allergies. Um, what is the process of the, okay. There's another um, question about quarantining, but let me just answer the one with special. So Ms. Elizabeth K, um, how will special work with students in the class and remote? So this week, um, again, is the same schedule that your child will have Monday through Friday upon returning. Um, so most of our uh, specials are um, live, um, but they may not be um, in front of the children. So the same specials that your child is getting at home will be the same specials that your child will get in school. Some of our teachers will be teaching art or music in a remote space if they're not um, uh, assigned to our school. And then we also have some in-house support um, with Miss, uh, the library specials and the um, guidance specials. So it'll be a combination of live, recorded, and in-person. Okay, and then um, the process of getting clearance for a student to return back after they have either isolated or quarantined. What is the process of getting clearance for the student to come back? Maybe that voluntary, voluntary, voluntarily quarantined or may have been um, exposed to COVID. How do they, how do, how, how do we know, or the nurse, how does that child get, or family or staff member get clearance to return? So the current guidance uh, from the CDC, and again, I, I allude to the board meeting because as we try to make sure our community has this information, you know, we, we start with our board who we're all ultimately amenable to. Um, and now we're trying to make sure we filter it to make sure the message gets to the school level. Um, so CDC updated their guidance for quarantining um, for non-symptoms for contacts on December 2nd. Um, and so if you are, let's say, again, we have that student that tests positive, that, test, that student who tests positive unequivocally needs the 14 days and unequivocally needs a negative PCR test to return back to school. That's how we know that that student is no longer contracting the virus or can pass the virus to someone. But for that student that is sent home as a, relate, as a result of a direct contact, two things. Student can present no symptoms for seven days after the contact and have a nasal PCR test that is negative student can present that negative result after seven days with no symptoms and return to school. And so again, if the, and it's of the last contact. So remember the, the scenario I gave you was a Monday, but they were in school Monday and Tuesday. So Tuesday is still a contact day. So then you would have to present for a test the following Wednesday, in addition to having no symptoms, uh, the student can come back. Secondarily, 10 days, no symptoms at all. Monitor your symptoms, student can come back to in-person instruction. Um, there was another part of that question. I don't remember the um, second like part. How, would, how will we clear, how will we clear them back? How will okay. we clear them back? So, so if, it's, if it's the 10 days, um, on, on a, so on a building level, the uh, Ms. Ms. King's staff uh, and uh, her nurse, everybody will know, because we, we will be in constant communication, hey, we had this case, so we will then have to chart, literally. Um, we had student zero who was the test. There were eight other kids in the class. There was a, 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 a teacher and there was an instructional support individual. All those individuals have been sent home. If the parents say, hey, 
If I monitor and I have no symptoms, can my child come back in seven days with a negative PCR test? Absolutely. Um, so again, that would be, you would give at the end of that seven days, you get the test results. And again, I, I don't want people to play with the calendar. So if the last date of exposure, let's call it today is Wednesday the 16th. If it was Tuesday the 15th, you wouldn't be eligible to utilize the seven days and test again until Wednesday the 23rd. And so you would test Wednesday the 23rd. Um, if you use the company that we are utilizing currently in district, once you have your patient portal, the test results come back fairly quickly. 48 to 55 or so hours, they're in your patient portal. And so you could literally download those results, email them into your school's principal to Principal King, and Principal King will know, okay, student B got, you know, took the test and they're good to go. Uh, or the 10 days uh, with no results, uh, with no symptoms uh, presenting themselves, then again, you would communicate with Principal King. Make sure you have a verbal conversation. Let's, let's not just send an email that may get lost in a shuffle with 500 other emails. Let's make sure we talk to Principal King. Hey, Principal King, day one for my quarantine was this day. My, you know, for my child, my child hasn't presented any symptoms. It's now day 11. Can I come, you know, he, he or she is scheduled to come to school tomorrow if they're on their rotation. Can I come? Let me consult with, you know, the COVID response team. As long as we are clear here and, and the days are accurate, you can come back into school. Um, and, and that's how we would know. We would keep those records on a building-based level. Um, I don't know, was there a second part to that? No, I, I, know, I know I can I talk. That's so it. I think um, maybe, um, is there, do, does the district intend to do more of a, uh, like a global, um, like, a, like when my when my son's school has a case, they'll it's just a it's it's a, just a format letter that you know says someone you know. Oh, so as far as notifications, okay. Yeah. So so notifications again, uh, um, confidentiality is paramount and, and and important for everyone, not only for your child, uh, but for any faculty or staff that may contract the virus. Um, and so all all primaries or and or direct uh, as well as secondary contacts will be directly called and notified because they would immediately have some level of quarantining protocols. All other individuals in and without the school building um, will get a form notification letter that, that will not allude to whether if it was a student or a faculty member uh, because we have to maintain confidentiality and health records to the most paramount uh, confidentiality status. Um, but you will be informed that on this day, the school and the district was informed that someone tested positive for COVID-19 in your child's school. Uh, you that's still it. have, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, and that's you, it. Have, you, you have the option to then at that point, if you want to say, hey, we're gonna work virtual yeah. for a week or so, yeah. by all means, but we, we cannot legally disclose anything beyond that. Yeah, I, I Again, unless, that unless, unless, yeah. unless you are uh, a, Part a of the primary English. or a secondary, which we have to contact you one-on-one -on -one to give you your personalized uh, quarantine protocols. Yeah, so um, as a parent who receives those letters, I make those decisions um, whether my child should go to school that next day or not. So I received one like the day before Thanksgiving break. I said, why, you don't have to go to school today. It's Thanksgiving break. We're gonna be all together. Why expose yourself unnecessarily? So you may have those options too. Um, okay, great. Um, thank you so much. And there's one more question um, about uh, uh, services. So will students be pulled out of IEP services such as speech or will they remain, I'm assuming remain in the classroom? So they, um, we have encouraged everyone to follow the same schedule. We've also tried to work out with our speech and um, our speech and support personnel to try as best as possible to do as many afternoon sessions to protect the instructional time in the morning. Um, so if your child is currently receiving speech or OTPT in the afternoon, they will most likely continue. Um, if, they um, if they receive it in the morning, we did make you know some subtle requests to try to push it to the afternoon, but obviously we can't push every student to the afternoon. Um, but our understanding is that uh, child study team members will try to maintain the schedule that they're currently on. Okay, and then if there's any change that would come from your case manager or your classroom teacher. Okay, any other questions? Okay, 
Um, well, it's about eight o'clock. And so we've been going for about 45 minutes. So if there's no more uh, questions, I'd like to close the meeting and also again, thank uh, Mr. Cox, Mohammed Saleh for your help and district administration for your continued guidance. And most importantly, our parents and our teachers for partnering with us. Whether you choose to remain remote or choose to return to school, um, we honor your decision and we'll continue to partner with you as best as possible, whether you're in a virtual space or you're in our building. Um, I think we have a, uh, an amazing building that's waiting for <laughs> our children and we are excited to see them um, and we will do everything in our power to keep your children safe and to um, make sure that we do our very very best to make you guys feel good about sending your children to school so i know you guys have some tough decisions to make whatever you decide we will continue in partnership with you and again i want to thank the teachers for all of their intense and hard work that they've been doing um, they should be commended and all of their work and you know work behind the scenes has not gone unnoticed by myself, district administration, and I know our families. So as we break for the holidays, make sure you take a moment to wish them the very, very best. Okay. On that note, we're going to close out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Muhammad. Again, I really appreciate it. Mr. Cox, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me. Okay. Have a, Have a good evening, evening everyone.